प्रणाम से जानेंगे यू कैन स्टार्ट नाउ ओ नमस्कार प्रणाम एवरीबॉडी गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन a whole lot of so called human values are really very elusive humility is no exception sometimes the moment we think we are humble that humility is lost right away therefore it is said by the wise one who thinks one is humble is arrogant and the one who is truly humble would never say one is humble so what is being humble what is humility we are trying to explore this all of us in a sense know what humility is it is rightly said that water collects where there is a dip in the land instead of a dip if it were a hump water would not collect over there this example or analogy is given for right learning to take place when there is humility it seems right learning can take place if there is no humility no matter how many lessons come our way in life we never learn the lessons in the loudest voice other people or mother nature might be saying things to us but if we are not humble we will not listen we will not internalize the message that has come our way on the contrary we would react we would resist we would say who is this person trying to teach us what business does he have to advise us what right does she have to point out a mistake on our part and so on and so forth life certainly is a movement in learning all our life we keep learning and when i say learning obviously the reference is not to physics or mathematics history or economics marathi or gujarati we are talking of learning life itself learning the art of living what is the hallmark of this art of living learned properly the characteristic of this art of living learned to well is the tenderness of love in one's heart is never damaged when the love in our heart gets injured we do not feel a sense of love either for others or for ourselves then i am afraid there is no learning for certain angry thoughts or at other times thoughts that put us down thoughts of maybe you call it inferiority complex maybe you call it a low self esteem or maybe you say revengefulness and a score of a dozen of varieties of mental conditions make us a prison of those thoughts that is where we like to look at humility as 
that quality which does not cause all this. Rather, if there is humility, none of these complexes, none of these angry emotions or low self-esteem or wanting to hit back at somebody, etc. None of these can make room in our bosom. Humility is to be appreciated as a way of being. It is nothing to do with holding on to a particular thought. It is a way of being where there is certain intuitive intelligence. One clearly sees that, hey, I am hurting myself by being revengeful. I am letting myself down by looking down at somebody or looking down at myself. When there are varieties of thoughts that judge our own value, and these thoughts tend to hijack us. It is humility that can help us look at those thoughts gently, neither condemning those thoughts nor embracing those thoughts. Out in the world, alas, Humility has been equated to external behavioral patterns. Somebody speaks softly, somebody uses words like, Sir, Madam, can I do something for you? and so on. Somebody gets out when you enter his room. Somebody runs to get you a glass of water. All these outer gestures are sometimes equated with humility, I would once more say, alas, they need not be humility at all. And in contrast, somebody who may come across as very stubborn or very indifferent, somebody who may, in the first impression, appear to be less concerned with you, less courteous, less polite, etc. Who knows? May be humble. Humility should not be judged by external behavior. This observation, this remark of mine is closely connected with one of the very insightful statements of Krishnaji when he said, a cultivated value is no value. Those who speak politely, those who do varieties of gestures which are taken to be a mark of humility, might have cultivated this kind of humility but they could be very violent within themselves. Krishnaji's statement, a cultivated value is no value, is a very disturbing statement to a lot of educationists. Out in the world, a whole lot of schools believe in putting values on the wall. Speak truth. Be simple, simple living, high thinking, all kinds of quotations with sometimes picture of some so-called great man who said that are all put on the walls. Does that guarantee at all that either the educators or the learners get any of those values? Quite possibly, the educators and the learners at such a school environment 
pretty soon memorize all those statements and conveniently use them in their lectures, in their exam papers, in their writings, articles, and so on and so forth. I am afraid those statements on the wall do not enter the heart of anybody. They remain secure in the head for being able to speak out on occasions. Cultivation is in that sense a clever activity of the human brain. The human brain very cleverly notices that externally moving in a certain way, speaking in a certain way, dressing in a certain way and what is more, even food habits and such things. In a certain environment, they are well received. So this clever mind of the human being that every one of us eats, notices that if I eat this kind of food, all these guys are going to accept me and there is some advantage I will have. I want to be in their good books. Therefore, though I love that kind of food, I will stop that food because these people will receive me better if I appreciate the kind of food that they eat and avoid the food to which I am used and so on and so forth to give an example. The clever mind is a great obstacle to inner blossoming. We need to put aside cleverness and be transparent, be earnest and that is next to impossible for those who have who have grown up being more and more clever all the time. Therefore, humility, if it is cultivated, it is a very petty affair. True humility is the fragrance that arises from sincere learning of art of living. In fact, the Sanskrit shlokas here and there are not wrong. They say, Vidya Dadati Vinayam. There is a famous shloka. But generally it is misunderstood. You become humble when you have scholarship. But scholarship does not guarantee humility. On the contrary, the scholars carry a certain pride in it. The scholars think of themselves as superior to others. But I would once more say, the Subhashita line is not wrong. We need to translate it in a proper way. Vidya Dadati Vinayam is to be translated as learning the ways of human life brings about humility. The word is learning, not accumulation of knowledge, not collecting more and more information. Just as by collecting a lot of scholarly information about smoking, someone would not stop smoking. But someone else, without reading any big books or scholarly articles, sincerely understands the harm that one does to oneself or to others by smoking. Seeing the harm, feeling the harm, feeling it deep inside herself or himself may leave smoking. Therefore, while the so-called popular literature goes for some sloganeering, goes for some high-flying quotations and the popular literature is replete with anecdotes, examples or how somebody behaved. Look at her, look at him, so rich he was, but he behaved in such a humble way. 
And that other lady was so scholarly. Oh, she was a vice chancellor of a university. But I saw her taking the broomstick and cleaning the front yard of some classroom. Wow, that is humility and so on. But friends, with due respect to all those people who do such gestures, those gestures and those isolated incidents do not stand for humility. There is no necessity, no requirement that such a person who took the broomstick in his hand or the politician who looking at the rising price of fuel rode a bicycle to his office you know, and ensured that his picture came the next day in the newspaper doesn't have to be a humble person. God knows whether he truly was humble or that riding a bicycle to the office was one more political stunt on his part or her part. Why go after only politicians? Every one of us has a clever fellow inside us. Every one of us, whether we are writers or not, speakers or not, and we are, whether we are in some respected positions or not, all humanity has this great challenge that they have to face and that is no other than the clever mind within them. Whom are they trying to deceive? They actually are deceiving themselves when they are clever. So when we take this sense of humility not as something cultivated but as the natural outcome of penetrating insights into life, as the natural fragrance of real awareness, of the foul smell of thinking high of oneself or equally thinking low of oneself. moment one judges oneself, it causes a distortion in the psyche and one has to see it for oneself. Judging others or judging oneself, both ways, one actually falls into a trap. So if I may attempt a kind of definition of humility this evening to share with all of you, I would say no bodily gesture, no verbal example, no particular acts, no particular deeds, no particular words, no particular tonal quality makes for humility. Then what under the sun is humility? We would say humility is a way of being where learning is facilitated. So you may come across anecdotes and stories and inspirational examples of scores of so-called great women and men of the world with due respect to all of them and uh, without uh, dismissing the case, maybe, maybe they were humble, maybe Gandhi was humble, maybe Mother Teresa was humble, maybe Baba Amte was humble, maybe Nelson Mandela was humble, maybe Martin Luther King Jr. or this scientist and that singer, this athlete, their tennis player, countless examples come towards us today with the explosion of information in the cyber media. There is no shortage at all of examples of so-called illustrious women and men of the world from whom we have to learn humility. We say, well, we don't want to shut our eyes or uh, keep away from those examples, but humility is not to be cultivated. It is not by imitating Gandhi or Martin Luther King Jr. 
it is not by trying to be like mother teresa from tomorrow morning it's not by resolving that i will here onward be like nelson mandela he is my role model etc if we say and go about it well really speaking it may cause yet another distortion to my psyche therefore neither dismissing these people as fake we have no right to call them fake nor making them our role models rather than either extreme can we more than studying mandela or teresa can we study our own behavior can we be aware of our thought processes where at times we feel we are higher we are you know, virtuous we are moral you know monarchs <laughs> whatever <laughs> all the figurative expressions are available at plenty rather than uh, going by those thoughts conditioned as we are in this society by very many influences it is no surprise that at times you and i get such thoughts sometimes we think we are such virtuous people some other time the same mind of our face there is no sinner worse than we are so <laughs> the mind goes on throwing in the air very many judgments about ourselves how good we are how bad we are how skilled we are how inefficient we are and so on functionally and psychologically there is a tendency to judge ourselves but then if there can be a balanced approach if there can be a certain amount of questioning certain amount of gentle inquiry and i would emphasize the sort of definition i gave humility is a state of being i don't even say state of mind it's a state of being where learning the traps and trappings learning about the contradictions or shall we say learning about certain artificialities in our way of thinking speaking or doing are understood if we understand those artificialities that understanding itself it seems has the potential to release us from those artificialities humility cannot be an artificial product rather true humility has to be something totally spontaneous therefore we don't aim at becoming humble we want if we say we want to uh, increase our humility every day a little bit <laughs> that is an immature approach then we have not understood what humility is therefore let me conclude by saying true humility is not what we aim at it's not something to be acquired all that we may do is be be truly watchful of the drama that we do of varieties of pretending that somehow enter our psyche our verbal behavior and our physical behavior too that is the domain where we need to be watchful and if these dramas these kinds of pretending these artificialities these contradictions in us are exposed in the light of the intelligence within us then rest of it will just happen on its own and then 
without aiming at acquiring humility, without wanting to be humble, there comes about true humility. And of course, humility is never to be misunderstood as being weak, being a yes man or a yes woman, being someone who always submits, always agrees to somebody before, before even that somebody completes his request or demand. <laughs> Those are all signs of weakness, signs of fear, they are signs of cowardice, and in this way we need to safeguard against pretentious humility. There is a Sanskrit expression, Ati Vinayaha Dhurta Lakshanam. If anybody is trying to be too modest and too humble outwardly, know for sure that is the sign of a wicked person. True, truly pious people would rather call a spade a spade and they would not pretend to be uh, humble and they would not try to please you by some artificiality. So, there is a lot of uh, confusion in the matter of every value actually, but today we have attempted uh, trying to understand a certain human value called humility. Let me pause here and as Jain Sahab suggested, I would uh, be happy to answer a couple of questions. And today I have organized my schedule, I am not going to run away so quickly. I should at least be there up to 7.20 or so. So I would be very eager to hear uh, views of all of you really, not only Milind or Harshad Bhai, but everyone, for it is about learning from each other that this dialogue is planned, scheduled. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come forward. Anybody who wanted to comment, question, is welcome. It can be a question or if one of you feels that 